like Mandela I wanna be remembered long after I'm gone Everything I do today someday will be a story to be told This hero's journey will not end when I'm gone The world is a marketplace and all those who pass through it, traders. The beauty of life itself is in living it. Some live for themselves and are considered to have merely passed through the world. Those who live for others and make great impact are said to have truly lived and traded a profit in the marketplace that life is. Muhammad Babandede belongs to the latter group. The Nigeria Immigration Service has so far known 17 leaders. Some were chief federal immigration officers, some directors of immigration, while others were Comptroller General of Immigration. Muhammad Babandede is the 16th Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service. Yet, he is the one considered father of the modern-day Nigeria Immigration Service and for good reasons. He is one of the longest-serving Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, having been in the saddle for more than five years, May 2016 to September 2021. But it is a tour of the service headquarters and other formations across the country that reveal indelible imprints of his innovativeness and foresight in both digital and physical infrastructure development. Born on a fine Thursday, the 21st day of November 1963 at Malamadori, Chigawa State. The young Muhammad attended Malamadori Primary School where he obtained the first school living certificate in 1975. Malmudur is a village that grew up along railway line. It's an interjection between road uh, and rail line. Uh, it was known at that time in the 60s for ground not pyramid. Uh, there was only one primary school. So it's not, an, it's not in the urban. It's only in the urban you find people who are extremely rich. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not rich people at that time. I can remember I was walking to school without shoes. Nobody took us to school. It was a government school. He proceeded to Government Secondary School Rano in Kano State, where he bagged his West African Senior Certificate in 1980. Mohamed Babandede was then admitted into the famous Bayero University Kano, where he studied history and Islamic studies. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1984. He later obtained a master's degree in law enforcement and criminal justice from Hamadou Bello University, Saria. Shortly after his National Youth Service, Babandede joined the Nigeria Immigration Service in 1985 as Assistant Superintendent and was a participant at the 12th Cadet Basic Course at the Premier Immigration Training School, Kano. I joined immigration even by accident. <laughs> so not that I planned, not, not that I went to beg somebody, not that I saw it online and applied. All those were not available. Uh, I, I just came to a place and they said, oh, People are apply, were applying for immigration. I said, what was immigration? They said, apply now. I even asked somebody sitting near me, how do you apply? They said, well, they were not applying for anything. <laughs> so, I, so later on, my uh, uncle said, no, 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 no. They're applying for a place called immigration. I said, okay, give me now the address. He gave me the address. After passing out, he was posted to the then Abuja command before the official relocation of the nation's capital from Lagos to Abuja in January 1986. He was later deployed to the procurement unit of the service's headquarters in 1988 as one of the pioneer officers. Muhammad Babandede served as personal assistant to former director of immigration service, late Garba Abbas, and as immigration attaché in the Nigerian embassy in Bonn and later Berlin, Germany from 1991 to 1995. Upon his return to Nigeria, he was posted to the investigation slash aliens department at the NIS headquarters. In 2004, he headed the Nigeria task force on combating the menace of trafficking in persons in collaboration with the Italian task force. This was the year 
that Mohamed Babandede established himself as an anti-human trafficking expert, becoming the first head of the Nigeria Immigration Service Anti-Human Trafficking Unit and was seconded to the then newly established National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, as Director of Investigation. I knew he was very good. That was why I made a beeline for him. And I was advised to try and get him over. Luckily, he agreed to come. He, he was good, very hardworking, very resourceful. He knew so much about trafficking, human trafficking. So it was a bonus for the agency. And I can assure you that I was never, ever at any time disappointed. We took the agency to great heights. It was thanks to him and quite a few others. It was during his five years of work at NAPTIP that Nigeria was elevated to Tier 1 rating in the U.S. Department of State Trafficking in Persons report. A man in high demand, Papandede returned to the Nigeria Immigration Service as a comptroller in 2010 to head the newly established migration unit, which attracted collaborations and capacity-building interventions from the EU, Frontex, IOM and UNODC. In 2014, he became Deputy Comptroller General and was appointed head of the then Directorate of Passport and Operations until 15 May 2016, when destiny beckoned. President Mohamed Buhari could not ignore Babandede's track record of performance and appointed him the 16th Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service. The person who recruited us was Lawan Sambo. Let Lawan Sambo. But let Damula was a person we met as a director of immigration when we came out from training school. Uh, so uh, I was in Abuja command, not the headquarters, headquarters was in Lagos. Uh, I, when I met Damulak, Damulak changed my life. I saw a leader well disciplined. He was a very disciplinarian, liked to keep time, liked to do things well documented. I really became interested and I said, when well, I became a CG. And Juarun let Dange, the next CG that came after him. One day I came to him and gave him advice. I said, sir, if you do this, it's good. He said, Papa Ntede, this is difficult. We cannot do this. This is very dangerous. It will bring conflict between me and the ministry. I said, sir, if, when I become a CG, he stood up. He says, when will that be? I said, 2020. Uh, 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 he, he just laughed uh, and left me. Because I mentioned the period when, uh, actually, I, I, I must have retired. <laughs> so <laughs> long, yes, he left. He said, go, 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 Papa Ntede. So you can see, uh, you need to have a hope. When I became, uh, reached the rank of ACG, I had a feeling I could be a CG. But you know, everything was left in, to God. So by the time I was DCG, I was really preparing of what this type of service I want to be. I wanted to, to lead. Uh, I, I brainstormed myself. I had some plans. I had some ideas packed to me. So I had a dream and I really planned for it very well to be a CG. And I thank God for the opportunity given to me by God. Like a man on a mission, Mohammed Babandede let loose all he had learned within and outside the service and within and outside the country. He was determined to bequeath the service legacies that would endure and with unprecedented support from President Muhammad Buhari, Papandede could shoot for the moon. President Buhari is a great person. People may not appreciate him. It will be tomorrow uh, when he's not there. Uh, he doesn't intervene on us. People see advantage and disadvantage of that kind of leadership. But if you have a head of agency or a serious minister who wants to achieve for the sake of achievement, he can do. A, he can run many miles. Because it's not a person who is going to call you and say, I'm going to send my sister. I'm going to send my daughter. You, do, you have to do this for us. You have to do this for the political party. He will never do that. So you have the leverage to, to speed. Nobody is holding you back. And even if there is somebody holding you back, if it is reported to him, he knows that it is genuine. He will not listen. So I'm happy I had a president, commander-in-chief, who I work with, who does not drag people for his selfish interests. You, never, nobody will tell you Bihari has asked for something because of his selfish interests. I think this is a, a, a great achievement. At a time when the nation was severely challenged by insecurity, which many blamed on foreigners, Mohammed Babandede thought it wise to initiate the migrant e-registration. It was a way of discouraging irregular migration into the country while capturing the data of every foreigner who sets foot on the Nigeria soil and making them known to the security agencies. 
you take biometric and biographic data at the point of entry, that a person can change his passport, but he will be the same guy. You can retreat and analyze this data. Uh, to the extent that you can link this with migrant registration. So those people who have also entered your country through illegal border, because we have a big challenge of our land borders. Those you miss at the land border, you force them to register because they are resident the past a period of 90 days. In a bid to string the Nigeria Immigration Service along with the changing times and position it as a leading migration outfit on the continent. Babandede launched the service into the paper light world where much of the work is done digitally. Before he left the service, he had advanced the paper light policy to the point that documents could be signed digitally and from anywhere by him and his deputies. It was in the passport and visa world that the former Comptroller General of Immigration struck his stuff like a colossus. From the enhanced e-passport to the visa on arrival, which helped improve Nigeria's ease of doing business profile, to the temporary passport, which ensured that Nigeria nationals are never stranded in foreign lands but can always return home whenever they wanted, Mohamed Babandedi ensured Nigeria was not left behind in the ever-evolving world of passports and visas. Normally, like in my country, it's more manual. So with the online thing, like to fill in the form online, it makes it easy and efficient. And I believe it is, it's a more seamless uh, process uh, which is in place here in Nigeria. He forged partnerships and alliances that led to human capacity development of staff as well as improved infrastructure and services at the Nigeria Immigration Service. The Migration Information and Data Analysis System, MIDAS, readily comes to mind. The system allows the service to collect, process, store and analyze traveler information and share data in real time across an entire national border network. The possibility before MIDAS is that some people might have traveled with a passport that is genuine, with a good visa that look alike. But now it is not possible because biometric would match the biometric of your passport. So it has to be the person you are traveling with. And this system would be linked with all the wanted persons globally, with the Interpol and local suspect index. Immediately you get to the boarding uh, desk to receive your boarding pass for Nigeria, of course, you cannot hide your identity. So my dad will tell us there that you are on the way. And the way the world is advancing, what it means that in a few years' time, nations can tell the airline, the carrier, that we don't want this passenger in our country. And that, to me, is the beauty of Midas. And I want to believe that with the training, human, development, human capacity development that we are having from the, from the IOM and other partners, that definitely we will, we will keep on improving and making the best use of this facility. The Migration Information Data Analysis System, MIDES, has revolutionized the country's border management operation, which has strengthened NIS's data uh, collection and storage capacity. Nigeria has the largest and most complex MIDES architecture in the world. That's present in all five international airports, 29% uh, uh, of the seaports, 16% of the land borders, and seven state commands. Uh, this is uh, what enables the five international airports to be con connected to Interpol I-24-7, and uh, it is supported by more than 130 workstations and border management equipment. The new entrance into the service headquarters, the Passport Application Data Processing Center, the contact center which ensures prompt response and service delivery to Nigerians. Driver's lounge, mechanical workshop, forward operation bases across the country and junior officers quarters to ensure that the service does not have to spend scarce resources on hotel accommodation whenever there is need to gather staff at the headquarters in their numbers. Who can ignore the imposing data and command control center, better known as the technology building? Apart from the aesthetics it adds to the Nigeria Immigration Service headquarters, 
The center provides a unique platform for security agencies in the country to truly synergize and harmonize efforts on the one roof to frontally address various national security concerns using the instrumentality of information and communication technology. The greatest achievement is the technology building. Uh, if you want to fight corruption, if you want to ensure a secured nation, if you want efficiency, there is nothing like IT-based system. Uh, the technology building is the hope of NIS and is the future of Nigeria. Uh, we are able to, the dream I have for if it continues, I'm not able to complete it 100%, but the building is there, the technology setting is there. You harness all information, all data. Now look at the lost and stolen passport database we have, which is in the technology building. In the olden days, Nigerians can throw away their passport or even hide it, including elite, wealthy and educated elite, who wants to go to America and go to London and go to South Africa and go to Ghana. They will say they have lost their passport. What they need is police report and affidavit. They will get another passport. Now, do it, you see trouble. Because immediately when you say a passport is lost, it goes into the Interpol lost and stolen passport database. It means available to 194 countries. Before I left, I saw wonderful things. A big men who said they have lost their passport in London, the passport was shown up in the database. So look, this passport is reported, reported lost and stolen. How comes you are traveling with it? <laughs> so uh, we have linked identity into one. Uh, otherwise, all this banditry, all issues to do with the kidnapping, once you have one database of a system where the telephone number is the same guy who has passport, or if you put his tab number, you see all his passport. If you put his passport, you see all his driver license, etc. Or if you touch a fingerprint, you can connect it with it. That is where we want to get to. If everybody copied and linked with the NIS, I'm telling you the future of security and development is enormous. With the giant strides recorded by the Mohammed Babandide-led Nigeria Immigration Service, President Mohamedou Buhari, in September 2020, took the extraordinary step of granting the unarguably most successful Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service in history a one-year extension at the helm when he attained the mandatory 35 years in service, thus paving the way for Babandidi to further cement his place in the nation's history. Apart from the capacity development of the service personnel, another major benefit of that extension was the completion the 1031 sitting capacity conference center, which the Minister of Interior, Raoul Farig Beshola, would graciously name after the departing Comptroller General of Immigration as a parting gift in recognition of his tireless and impactful service to Fatherland. Very top management of the service. Baban Dede became the first ever Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service to be pulled out of service in an elaborate program of events, living eulogies in his trail. Traditional rulers, senators, House of Reps, members, governors, other dignitaries here present, we are so much proud of you. We appreciate you made this very occasion colorful. You made this occasion worthwhile. It is your presence that beautifies this very, without your presence here, it wouldn't have been this complete. Babandede leaves behind a digital service and well-motivated workforce. I sincerely thank you. Uh, I don't have anything much to say because I'm part of the management. Uh, the shoe we are living is uh, entirely very, very big. I must confess. So I'll try to see whether I can be able to put in my leg inside. But I assure you, by the grace of God, I won't let you down. By the grace of God. I made up my mind not to pursue money. People, people say, no, I say, look, the job first. There are many people, head of agencies, anything they see, how much do I get from the job? And the job would never be done. Look at the project we, uh, we have rolled out in NIS. Look at the policy documents. I have produced almost nine policy documents for NIS. Projects, uncountable projects. I cannot even read them. Commands. We are living in the Secretariat. The, above all, the technology building, which has never been done by NIS, even for bigger to construct a project in NIS. Initially, they said, no, NIS can, could not do it. But thank God we were able to complete it. So when you don't have personal interest, 
uh, which is above public interest, success is inevitable. Uh, and I hope other head of agencies and government representatives will put public interest first before their personal interest. And these are the secrets uh, of our success. If at all we succeed, but it is left for people to judge to say we have done well, not myself. A member of the Interpol Working Group on Trafficking in Persons, who contributed to publications for various international agencies, including the Europol, Interpol, and the United Nations offices in New York, Geneva, and Vienna. Babandede made impute at the Nigeria National Policy on Migration, UN Anti-Human Trafficking Manual for Criminal Justice Practitioners, and the EU-funded Basic Training Manual on Investigation and Prosecution in Migrant Smuggling. It is therefore not surprising that since his exit from service in September 2021, it has been one recognition after another within and outside the country. Chikawa Young Professionals on Tuesday 21st September 2021 in Abuja. You have set a benchmark for us, all of us from Chikawa, to know what we are supposed to do when we get responsibility. Because the kind of impact you have made in the Nigerian Immigration Service or in the country in general, I think is not something that can be forgotten soon. Hadeja Emirate, Jigawa State, reception and award ceremony on Saturday 25th September 2021 at Hadeja Town. <laughs> Ringim Emirate, Jigawa State, reception and award ceremony on Sunday 26 September 2021 at Ringim Town. <laughs> Retired NIS Committee of Friends, dinner and award ceremony on Saturday 2nd October 2021 in Kano. Nigerian Community in Saudi Arabia reception and award ceremony on 18th November 2021 at Jeddah. <laughs> Guild of Civil Societies and Media Executives for Equity, Justice and Transparency in Nigeria, reception and award ceremony on Friday 26th November 2021 in Abuja. Knighted by the King of Spain Tuesday 7th December 2021 in Abuja. Now you are a real official of the cross order, cross of official of the civil merit, and you belong to this society, very important society. I can tell you, I have seen the persons which have been awarded, and uh, uh, we have in Spain, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has two official awards, which is this uh, medal, this cross, uh, and another one. The two are very important, but normally when a head of state or Prime Minister, head of government, goes to Spain, he receives this award. So now you've joined a very important club, and I'm sure that uh, not only you have deserved, but uh, as you have told us, you, you won't disappoint us. You will continue to work for Spain. Now you're ambassador of Spain, ambassador of Nigeria to Spain. Thank you. National Association of Retired Paramilitary Officers, NAPO, award ceremony on Wednesday, 8th December 2021 in Abuja. There are many more invitations for recognition and awards. I used to say, if God is human, I will not ask God for any help again. Imagine a man who has helped you, done everything in life. Uh, then you come and ask him for another thing. But God is not like that. You can ask him even when he has given me everything in life. Uh, I really thank God for a successful tenor in service. And I'm happy, more fulfilled the way I left. 
Uh, remember, I was the first Controller General Immigration to be pulled out officially from service. I was the first to officially hand over under the media to my successor. There was a validity section for me in my honor, but that was not enough. The community where I lived organized a wonderful reception for me. And many politicians became scared, thinking that I would be a politician. They just did it out of love for me. Uh, the international community organized uh, many receptions for me. Uh, above all, the king of Spain gave me a knighthood. Mm. Uh, so uh, this is after retirement. So what I've seen after retirement makes me even more happy. In short, it is more ceremonial than the time I've arrived. I'm, I feel fulfilled. I thank God for everything. After a long and extraordinary service to the nation, this quintessential public servant would love to retire to his privacy and family. But at only 58, many are asking, what next for Muhammad Babandidi? There are other things to do. Politics, anything, but I don't know. But I, I, I have a lot of confidence in his uh, capabilities and I'm sure he's still going to go further despite the fact that he's, he's retired but not tired. Someday the world will see and recall that I was here. Even when I'm gone, my work will speak for me. I want to leave behind something bigger than me. Something bigger than me. Something Papa Diddy's 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 Something Papa Diddy's